book formatting. This can be a headache for many authors. And what I wanna talk about in this video is take an in-depth look at the Atticus book formatting software. We're gonna do a review. I'm gonna share with you what I've shared with coaching clients of mine, and we're gonna get into it. So if you've not heard of Atticus, it is a, a great software. Back in the day when I wrote my first self-published book and when I wrote my traditionally published book, both of them, I ended up using Scrivener. That was the software that I was using, but I found that I was only using 10% of the capabilities of Scrivener and I still had a struggle with formatting. But Atticus, the reason I jumped into Atticus is because it claimed to solve that problem. Let's look at it and see what it actually can do for us and our book formatting. And so I've published several books, in fact, four in the past 12 months using Atticus. You can see many of them here in the series. And so I'm gonna jump in and actually just take a closer look. So we'll jump in. This is inside of Atticus. This is the writing side of Atticus. And you can see up here that you can flip over to formatting. But before I do that, I think one really cool, helpful view when you're in here and you're writing is down here in the bottom, you can click on this little previewer and it's going to pop out for you what it actually can look like as you go along. So this is chapter one inside the book and this is what it looks like on the iPad. I can try different fonts. I can say, what does it look like in the actual paper white Kindle? And I can even view it in there. And then a really cool thing is you can go all the way up to print and we can take a look at what the print looks like. In fact, we can even click on this and it's going to open up this particular chapter inside of a PDF and we can take a look at the formatting. And you can see it here, it's got the title at the top. It's also got the title of the chapter. So that's the title of the book, title of the chapter. You can see how each of these elements are handled as you go through the formatting aspects of this. All right, let's jump back in. So where do we go to make changes with the formatting? And that's where the genius, in my opinion, of Atticus really is click over here to formatting. Now, once we're over here in formatting, you're gonna see that there are lots of templates for you to choose. And the good news is if there's, a, if there's not a real template that you like, then start with one and then you can customize it. So for example, this right here is the one I've named it my hardcover YMM series and we're gonna get right into it and I'll show you some of, some of the things that I like about this. So first of all, you'll notice that along the left side, we've got chapter, chapter heading, we have paragraph settings, we have subheadings, we have scene breaks, notes, print layout, topography, header and footer, and trim sizes. So there's a lot to cover in here, but I'm just gonna give you the overview of each of these. So the chapter heading. In here, you can decide, do you want the chapter number to show? Now notice when I uncheck this, what happens over here on the right side is it updates and then the number goes away. If I click it, you'll see the number will come back. And so what's really cool is while you're doing this, it's editing it for the entire book, which is really cool. Back in the day when I was doing the formatting, I would download a template from CreateSpace, which was the publisher of print books before Amazon bought them and incorporated them into the actual KDP platform. And I would have to download a template and then I have to meticulously make changes in the entire document. It was a real headache for sure. So you can choose your fonts for your chapter headings. Do you want to line them center? Do you want to have the right style? Do you want to increase the font size? Uh, do you want what width percentage do you want? If you want to actually have the word chapter, you just ch check that, hit that button, and you'll notice 
now it says chapter one on it. Or if you want the number uh, spelled out instead of the actual number, there you go. So there's a lot of customizations that you can make with the formatting here. So scroll down, you've got chapter subtitle and some of the things there. If you wanna add a chapter image for your chapters, you can do that. It'll leave a, a spot for you to be able to do that. All right, paragraph. So you could do drop caps. So drop caps, you can see right here at the very beginning, small, but it's got the first letter really big. You can remove that and give it a second. It'll update and it will take that out, but I like it in there. You can, when to use the first sentence formatting, subsequent paragraphs, spaced, let's go to subheadings. So subheadings, you have all different kind of fonts for the different heading twos and heading threes and heading, five. there's scene breaks. So if you wanna do a scene break, now this is more for like fiction writers, but if you wanna do a scene break, you could do that or you can open up your own or create your own type of scene break and just add it in here. The notes section is great for like any book citations, things that you're doing. I have mine where it shows up at the end of the book, but you can have it as footnotes or you can have it just show up at the end of the chapter. There's chapter settings, EPUB, how you want to do those, and on it goes. Print layout. So print layout is um, the margins. Now I typically do not mess with these except for a couple of things. But one of the things I do is I use this keep option here with subheadings. Now, the reason why I like to check this is because sometimes you, and you've probably had this experience where you've got sub headlines in your chapter. And the last thing you want is for a sub headline to be the last thing on a page, right? It just doesn't look right. And so when you turn on the subheadings keep option, it's going to keep it with some text. So it's either going to move that subheading over to the next page, or it's gonna to try to draw in the first sentence or two to create space for that. That is amazing. That is a big relief because when I didn't, when I first started using Atticus, I didn't know that option was available. And so I constantly went through my document and I was like, tabbing down, creating extra spaces, try to get the subheader to show up on the next page. And then I realized I don't need to worry about that. So pretty cool. Layout priority, widows and orphans. We have topography. This is your body font and the size you want. You can uh, check these off however you want these to show up. Uh, header and footer. This is great for choosing, do you want a title to show up at the top of the left side of the page and then the chapter, that's book title by the way, and do you want it in the center, do you want it on left and right, and you can go through, there's all kind of options here. And then finally, trim sizes. Now, I love this right here, this is really awesome because if you notice, and I know it's small on the screen, but you'll see orange and light blue colors. What are those? You can see down here at the bottom, all the orange are the size formats that work with Amazon KDP. The blue are all the size formats that work with Ingram Spark. Now, if you're not familiar with Ingram Spark, that is a popular place to publish your book besides Amazon, in addition to Amazon. It gets it into bookstore databases and places like Barnes and Nobles online database and on their website and lots of other places. And so if you're going to also use Ingram Spark, you want to be creating ideally something, a size that has both. So let me show you what I ended up landing on. So what I ended up doing for my books is I chose the five and a half by eight and a half. And there's a very specific reason why. First of all, actually two reasons. First of all, it has both orange and blue, so I can publish this size without having to mess with anything in Atticus. When I download the PDF, I can publish this both on KDP and Ingram Spark. So that's really important, that's number one. And the second reason is because I wanted to have a paperback and a hardcover edition. So these are two different editions. That's the hardcover. This is a paperback version. This is the hardcover. 
and they're both the same size. Why? Because inside of KDP, there's less options for your sizes for your hardcover. So I didn't want to have to mess with keeping up with everything. So I chose the five and a half, so 5.5 and 8.5 so that when I publish, I can export one PDF when my book is done out of Atticus and I can use it for the paperback and I can use it for the hardcover. And I can do the same paperback and hardcover over in Ingram Spark as well. So there you go. Those are the big things that you want to remember. And then of course you save your version and then you can use that version, that formatting with all your future books. And that is what I've been doing through this entire series. Again, I've done four books in the last 12 months, all using Atticus, using the formatting. And it's just allowed the formatting to be non-existent really, because all I gotta do is just go through and see what my book looks like. I'll just scan through it, see if everything looks good, because the formatting options, the fonts, everything's the way I want it for my series. And then I download that PDF and I go upload it and I can publish it right away. So what questions do you have on formatting with Atticus? Go ahead and ask those questions below. Happy to answer those questions. I'm a big fan of Atticus, as you can see. I'm publishing lots of books with it and it's helping me as a writer just enjoy the process of writing and not being bogged down in the tech and the design and all of those things. And I'm sure you're the same way. All right, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.